Hello YouTube, I'm ABC, and today I'm making this tutorial for you guys. In, in today's tutorial, um, I'm going to talk about RAM generation, or Minecraft style RAM generation with caves. So this is based off of a tutorial I made several months ago, back in December. And, um, uh, so that tutorial covered RAM generation. And after that tutorial, a lot of people, um, many people, uh, commented saying they wanted add-ons to it. So one of those was caves, so that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I, um, did a little bit of, a uh, trial and error with, with, with this and I ended up finding a script that was able to generate decent caves in uh, along with this, this the code that I had in the previous tutorial. So without any further ado, let's start with the tutorial. I hope um, you guys find it helpful. Alright, let's get started, shall we? So here I have the code from my random generation tutorial. Um, I'll include a link to that in the description. So to start off, we're going to create a new object and then call obj block. Um, for reasons you'll understand later, we're going to need to have um, these objects parented to one block. So, um, when we're destroying them for the cave, we're going to need to say destroy this specific block. So, I want to be able to refer to them all by OBJ block. So, go in each individual block that we have and set the parent to OBJ block. Go ahead and do that for every single one of them, like so. Okay. So now we got OBJ block, and when we refer to OBJ block, we know that it'll work for all three of these. Now we're going to modify our. Actually, one second, let me just create an object called OBJ cave. Alright, so this is going to be our cave object. I'm not going to put any code in there yet, but I want you to imagine it as a giant earthworm that eats through them, through the um, terrain to create the cave. So, and, so in our generation code, we're going to create them in order to uh, um, create the caves. So first off, we're going to create a new variable called done instead equal to false. Done is going to represent whether our terrain is generated, and once it's generated, we're going to have our cave start um, uh, doing their thing, eating through the terrain. And we want to make sure it doesn't start doing that until our terrain is generated. So that's why we have this done variable. Okay. So right here, we're going to put a line of code that will generate our our cave. So what we want to do. So I'm just copy this one. So this creates the grass at the very top of our, um, or at the surface of, of our terrain. So instead of creating grass, we want to create our cave. Exact same thing. So, but we don't want to create create the cave every place. We want to have a little random variable to it. So I'm going to type down if I random. Uh, let's see, 25 is equal to two. Then create a cave. So what this will do is this will select a random number between I think 1 and 25 or 0 and 24, I'm not sure which one. And it'll be a number. It won't give me any decimals like the random one would. With the I random, it'll just go with integers. It's whole numbers. So we're checking if it's equal to 2. It doesn't really matter what you put down there. So that means um, uh, there's a t 1 in 25% chance or sorry, well, there's a 1 in 25 chance that it'll be created. So that's about 4% chance that they'll create one of these caves. So that's something else I want to check for. We want to make sure that the caves don't spawn too close together. So I'm going to say, we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it cave equal to 0. And we're going to say, in addition to the this random thing, we're going to make sure that cave is less than 0. So and at the end of our code, we're going to say cave minus equals zero, subtract one from cave. So it'll go through the first time, cave equals zero. So it won't. This won't happen the first time ever because cave will never be less than zero because it's equal to zero. And then it'll subtract cave one the second time it goes through. It will be possible for it to create a cave depending on this random variable. And then once it creates a cave, we're going to set cave equal to ten. So that way we know it'll go through this code another ten times because it'll subtract one from cave each time, so it'll go through the other ten times before it is capable of creating cave again. So that way, we have it spaced out, and it's also randomized. So that's how our caves will be created. And that's everything. So, let's go into our cave. In the creation end, we're going to have three variables. First, dire, which is going to be our direction. So, so dire is the direction the cave is going, and we want to randomize it so that um, it's unpredictable, moves in unpredictable fashion. So to start off, we're going to say random 
120 plus 210. This is just trial and error what I came up with. So this will make it show up between 210 and 210 plus, one, plus 120. So it'll range between 210 and, what is that, 330. Um, and that's a random direction, and it'll, they're both going roughly downwards. So, next way we're going to set up is delta di. How much do direction change each step? This is also going to be randomized. I'm going to type down random 8 minus 4. This will make it range between negative 4 and 4. This is just something I found that worked. And um, if you made this... Um, if you made this a bigger range, the, the cave would change directions faster. And if you made this a smaller range, the cave would be um, would move less, change direction less. And the last variable is r. R is gonna be the radius of the cave. How how tall is the cave when you're inside it, and how big is it? So I'm gonna set the equal to eight. So eight pixels is what it's gonna start out with, and that works with our code. So these three variables, make sure you understand what they mean. So let's go in the step event, and this is the big, important, long script. So, we're going to want to make sure that if control.done is equal to true. Sorry, that's Java. Just one equal sign. So, um, we want to make sure that control is done. Done um, setting up there, um, generating everything. Which reminds me, I messed something up. Because once, once it's done with all this, we're going to say done equal to true. So make sure you have done equal to true there, otherwise your code won't work. So done signifies that the our um, landscape, our terrain, is generated. So once our terrain is generated, so it's ready to be destroyed, once that happens, we're going to go through our code. So, um, this script um, moves one step moves our cave one step. So that's what that code's going to do. And we're going to want to repeat that moving one step a certain amount of times. So I'm going to say repeat. This will repeat that code. And I'm going to make it repeat I random 15 plus 30. So this will make it range between 30 if I random equals 0 and 45 if I random is 15. So that's how often it'll go through the movement. And um, the reason I used I here is because you can't really repeat something a decimal time. So like if this turned out to be 22 point, no, 32.5, that doesn't really work. So that's why I did that. So this movement code will be repeated over and over again. Now let's go ahead and code the movement in there. First off, delta dire plus equals random 10 minus 5. This will change around our change in directions. This could make it either more or less because this is ranging between negative 5 and 5. And then we want to apply that new delta dire or that change delta dire to our dire or our direction. And so d dire plus equals delta dire. So if delta dire turns out to be a negative number, it will actually decrease direction if it would turn out to be a positive number it would increase direction. So now we're going to set maximums and minimums to our dire to make sure that um, it doesn't move in directions we don't want it to. Like, we don't want to go straight back up. That wouldn't follow with the logic of our case. So, we're going to set the maximum. So if dire turns out to be more than 340, we want dire to be equal to 340, because we don't want to go above 340. And we're going to set delta dire equal to zero, because if delta dire is a positive number, will get the effect where delta dire will be equal to 340 and delta dire will keep pushing up on it so it'll stay at 340 which would make it look unnatural so that's why I said delta dire back equal to zero so if now set up minimums if dire is less than 200 we're gonna set dire equal to 200 and for the same reason we're gonna set delta dire equal to zero alright moving right along now, now that we got our dire figured out, let's go ahead and, and move the um, and change our x and y values to, to move the cave. So x equals eight times cosine dire times pi divided by one eighty. Okay. So this is 
trigonometry right here. You learn all all about it in pre-calculus or, tri or your trigonometry class in high school. Um, so basically what this saying is, imagine this has a triangle. I guess I'll go ahead and put up a graphic. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up paint on it to illustrate this. Okay, so now I've just pulled up paint on it and I'm going to illustrate to you the um, what, I, uh, what we're doing in that code. So, here let me just make a, a black dot. I'll make a bigger black dot. So, that's where our cave is at right now. I'll put it right here, I suppose. So, we want, so our direction, let's say our direction, oops. Let's say our direction moves in somewhat of this direction. So, it'll look something like that. So now we want to figure out how do you change x value. So what we're going to do is, we're going to imagine our that direction as a triangle. Oops, no directional arrows anymore. As a triangle, like so. And that would be a right triangle. 90 degrees right there. So, um, that's our triangle and everything. So now, you want to figure out how to change x. So the way we're going to do that is we have this angle right here, which is going to be equal to our dire. That's dire. And we want to figure out what the length of this bottom side is. So if we use trigonometry, we know that cosine is equal to... Um, Cosine is equal to our adjacent side, so this side, divided by our hypotenuse, which is this side. And we want our um, this hypotenuse length to be 8, which is just a value I came up with. I'll explain a little more about later. And so we want to figure out this side. So the way we can figure that out is... So we know that cosine of dire is equal to um, the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse side. So we're going to call that adjacent side x because that's what we're trying to find, and we'll divide that by the hypotenuse. So by that logic, we can multiply both sides by 8 and find that x is equal to cosine of dire. There we go. And we can find the the change in y via similar means. We can, sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so sine is equal to our y value, oops, sorry, the sine of our angle dire is equal to uh, y divided by 8, and then we can multiply both sides by 8 to get 8 times sine of dire, and that's equal to y. So that's how you find our chain x change in y, and that's how that works. So go back to Game Maker now. Alright, so that's our code here. 8 is equal to x is equal to 8 times cosine dire, and this right here, multiplying by pi divided by 80, is a simple conversion. Um, in Game Maker and basically in programming language and in calculus and everywhere, cosine functions take radians, not degrees. And dire, our direction, is in degrees, range between 0 and 360. While radians range between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm just multiplying by pi divided by 180 to convert over to radians. That's all that is. So we'll go ahead and set up y. So y is equal to 8 times sine, dire times pi divided by 180. Same thing, really. So this will move our worm along, or our cave. Now we're going to set up the radius of our cave. How, how far do we want the destruction to span? So we're going to say r plus equals random 8 minus 4. So this will either add 4, or this will generate to negative 4 and, and 4, and that's how, how much it will increase. And um, increase or decrease. And that's in pixels. And now I want to set maximums and minimums to our r just like we did here with our dire. So if r is more than 24, we want r to equal 24, so that's the maximum. And if r is less than 2, we want r, oh, 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 we want r to equal 2. So this will make sure that the k doesn't get extremely big and eat up our whole world. Okay, next. We're going to grab all the objects within within our the ra our radius, and we're going to destroy them. So I'm going to, so in order to grab that, I'm going to say with collision ellipse. So this will grab all the objects within an ellipse. 
or a circle. A little bit different, but circles are all this what ellipse is. So we'll go through our arguments here. X value, the or or I'm sorry, the the x to the farthest left left side is x minus r because x is going to be our center where we we're at and minus r because that's our radius. And where's the uppermost y part? So that's y minus r. And then where's the rightmost x part? That's x plus r. And where's the down, bottom downmost y part? That's y plus r. Which object we're looking for? OBJ block. That is why we made this OBJ block value or variable over here. Because if we didn't, we would need to check individually for stone, dirt, and grass. And this just makes things a whole lot more efficient. And then there's two that says precision. Yeah, let's be precise. And not me. Yes, we don't want to destroy me. Okay, so now we've grabbed that object. And we with that object, we're going to have it destroy itself. So instance, destroy. Destroy. So... Now we have that, and the, our, the problem with this right now is that collision lifts will only grab one object. So we want to keep repeating this code until all of our objects in that area are gone. So while, we'll use make a while loop. So while this condition is true, it'll continue destroying stuff. So I'm going to say instance exists collision, actually uh, let's just do it this way copy this whole entire code and paste it in there. So this is basically saying while the object with within that area still exists. So while there's still an object in that area, keep destroying them. So that's basically how that works and so that this code right here will be repeated a certain amount of times and once it's done, done repeating, we want to destroy our cave because at, at that point just taking up memory and it's not doing anything. So that is the entirety of our code and now our um, random generation should include caves. So I'm going to click, click, click play and let's hope that works. Problem. Parentheses and stuff can be hard to keep track of sometimes. So the while loop, does it turns red when I highlight it because it doesn't have any parentheses. Instance exists and it's there. The collision ellipse uses those, so there's no any parentheses for a while, we gotta add that. And um come to think of it, I missed something. This code I did slightly wrong. Um when we were uh, doing our proof earlier, we were solving for the change in x, how much x and y should be changed. And here I set x and y equal to that. So we want them to be changed. So x plus y minus. Um I did y minus because I'm programming the y axis is flipped. If if I were to do y plus, it would go up when I want to go down, and down when I want to go up. So that's why I did the minus. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. Now it should work. All right, so here's the first generation, and you can see a little cave down there being generated. So let me just re re remake it. See, oh, the, there's another cave, and I keep using spacebar to see if I can find better examples. All right, there you go, cave generator right there. There's a cave generator right there. Oh, two caves in this one. Shows you that our randomization code is working. And one cave off to the side right there. If you want caves to be more frequent or less frequent, you can change around the code at, um, uh, in the uh, control object. So here it looks like a cave was generated here on the side of that mountain. Oh, two caves here. Caves. There's more caves. Now, this isn't the best code to, code to use, but this is the best one I was able to figure out. I hope you found it helpful, and that's basically the end of the tutorial. I hope, um, hope to see you guys next time, and uh, have a nice day. I've been getting many comments um, asking for additions to that tutorial. Michael, stop smiling, please. You're, you're distracting me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. I'm it's in the you. picture. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, we're starting over then. Don't, don't press anything up. No, about. no, just leave it in there. It's the best. <laughs> okay, we, we want to loop then? Just leave, no, leave all, leave all of it in. No, I'm not. No, this is great. No, here, this someday. is great. <laughs> Alright, yeah.
Take four. <laughs>